All right, so in today's video, I kind of just wanted to do a breakdown of the titles of the final Evangelion film, kind of a deep dive into them. Up until now, all of the films have had three titles total, the first being the Japanese title, then the English title, and the English subtitle. And so let's just get a better look at each of those titles. So the Japanese one first is Shin Evangelion Gekijoban. The English title is Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. And then the English subtitle is Thrice Upon a Time. And so we're going to look at each of these titles separately, and then kind of at the end, piece them all together. And just some quick background information on each of the titles. Um, the Japanese title Shin Evangelion Gekijoban was originally revealed at the end of... 3.0 back in 2012 during the next time preview after the credits. We didn't get the English subtitle even going 3.0 plus 1.0 until almost two years later at a Lantern Festival in Japan that the director Hideaki Anno usually participates in and he revealed the title there. And then we didn't get the English subtitle until the beginning of this year in 2020 um, when they originally unveiled this poster. Alright, so first let's look at the English subtitle and then we're going to go backwards to the English title and then finish off with the Japanese title. So Thrice Upon a Time, why is it called Thrice Upon a Time? Where does Thrice Upon a Time even come from? So up until now, each of the subtitles have been You Are Not Alone, You Cannot Advance, You Cannot Redo. So all of the subtitles so far have followed this pattern of You, blah blah blah, not, blah blah blah. So why does it change for this final movie? Why does it, why do they change the pattern? Well, the thing is, is even though it doesn't follow the pattern of the first three rebuild films, it does follow a pattern, but it does follow a pattern that Anno has set up in his previous works. So the title actually comes from Thrice Upon a Time by James B. Hogan. So there is this tradition that Anno has of kind of naming the final installments in his series after a famous sci-fi novel. So the first time he did this was actually with the TV series before Evangelion, um, Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water. The final episode of that series in English was titled Successor to the Stars, or in Japanese, Hoshio Tsugumono, which is actually named after the book Inherit the Stars, also coincidentally by James P. Hogan. And Inherit the Stars is slightly different from Successor to the Stars, but that's just a translation issue. In Japanese, they are basically identical. Um, Hoshio Tsugumono in Japanese as well. If you do look, though, he does stylize it a different way where he does use kanji for mono and he does add an ellipses. I feel like this is just a stylization choice. The only reason I'm mentioning it though is because there are other times where he makes changes to these titles that I feel are more significant and they do have some nuance that he wants to change about them. In this case though I think it is just a stylistic thing. All right and then the next time he did it was with Evangelion. So the title of the final episode of the TV series, episode 26, was The Beast That Shouted I at the Heart of the World, which is based off of the story The Beast That Shouted Love at the Heart of the World by Harlan Ellison. And you do see there is this discrepancy here where the English title is Love for the short story, but for the episode title they're using I. That's not an issue when it comes to the Japanese title for the short story because I just happens to be a homophone for the English I. So if you look here, the characters are different. The Japanese title for the short story uses the kanji for I, but then for the title for the Evangelion episode, they use katakana. And this is basically just to give some ambiguity of what kind of I it is. So most of the time for the English translations, like a circled in green below, they use I as in myself, but you could say it is I as in love, or you could even say it's I as in eyeball. But the fact that he did change the spelling, I believe was intentional to make it more ambiguous. So this is where he kind of gets into playing with the nuance. He did this as well for the theatrical edition of episode 26, which is translated as Yours Sincerely, but in Japanese it's Magokoro Kimini, which I think a better translation is My Purest Heart for You. It's a more literal translation. And so this is actually based off the story Flowers for Algernon, which in Japan is normally translated as Flowers for Algernon as well, but the title of the movie that's based off of Flowers for Algernon, which is called Charlie in America, in Japan is called Magokuro Kimini. So it's kind of like three layers deep of reference, I guess. And so just another little fun fact, in the original project proposal for the Evangelion TV series, episode 26's original title was planned to be The Only Neat Thing to Do, which is based off of a sci-fi story by James Tiptree Jr. Alright, so back to Thrice Upon a Time. 
The big question is, can we predict Shin Evangelion's contents based on the novel's content? And the answer is probably not. So I have read The Beast That Shouted Love at the Heart of the World and Flowers for Algernon before, and I feel pretty confident saying that the title choices weren't really done with the contents of the stories in mind as much as they were the nuance of the titles. So the contents of The Beast That Shouted Love at the World and Flowers for Algernon don't really mirror either of the episode 26s of Evangelion at all, but the titles I feel like super, like they super definitely rep represent the contents of episode 26 and the theatrical edition of episode 26. So for The Beast That Shouted Love, or in the episode's case, I, at the heart of the world, it's literally an entire episode that's about Shinji's introspective journey. And then for Flowers for Algernon, the Japanese title being Magokuro Kimini, Sincerely Yours, or My Purest Heart for You, literally, like, it's an entire introspective journey, again, that Shinji goes on. Like, he basically lays bare his entire consciousness to not just the audience, but, like, to humanity itself. All right, so next, let's look at Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. So the obvious thing, like what can this mean, is it just means 4.0. It's just a stylistic choice, like instead of just being a normal person and calling it 4.0. And so there is some evidence that it could just be as simple as that as well. So in the first series that he directed, Gunbuster, which was a six-episode OVA series, there was actually a segment at the end of the episodes called um, Gunbuster Science Lessons. And the first two were called Episode 1 and Episode 2, and they used kanji for them. And the second two were episode three and episode four, but then when the final volume came out that had episode five and episode six of the OVA on it, there was no episode five or six for the science lessons themselves. However, years later, they came back and they did add a fifth episode, and instead of just simply calling it episode five, they called it episode four plus one. So just personally, I feel like this was a case of them just doing it stylistically. Instead of calling it episode 5, they just wanted to have some fun, and they called it episode 4 plus 1 instead. So for even going 3.0 plus 1.0, it could just be the exact same thing. It's just like a fun thing to do. Another interesting thing to note, though, is that when they added this extra episode, they also changed the title to the segment from Gunbuster Science Lessons to Shin Gunbuster Science Lessons, or New Gunbuster Science Les Lessons which is the Japanese title of Shin Evangelion. So Shin Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, and then you have Shin Gunbuster Science Lessons, episode 4 plus 1. So there is that parallel. However, other reasons why it could be separated from 3.0 plus 1.0 besides just stylization, um, it could be trying to reference that the story of 3.0 is not over yet, and that this final film will actually finish the story of 3.0 and then carry on into something new. So that's one way to look at it. And there is some evidence that the final two movies were always connected as well. So when the project was originally announced, the, the final two films, the third film and the fourth film, were announced as a double feature to be released at the same time. Even once this plan fell through though, the two films were supposed to release incredibly close together. Up until the premiere of 3.0 even, the scheduled release of the final Evangelion film was a year later, which would have been the quickest turnaround for any of the films. The gap between 1.0 and 2.0 was about two years. The gap between 3.0, the gap between 2.0 and 3.0 was about three years. But literally up until the day that 3.0 released in theaters, the plan was to release the final film almost within a year of 3.0's release. So they've always been tied together in some way. And so besides that, there is some other interesting things that kind of prove that the final two films, the third film and the fourth film, are tied together. So in 2013, a short music video titled Peaceful Times was released, and then in 2014, another video entitled Until You Come To Me was released. And both of them seem to have featured scenes that were cut out from an ending of 3.0, which has now basically been confirmed as the beginning of the final film. So we've kind of seen this content move migrate from the tail end of the third movie to at least the beginning portion of the final film. So just for example, um, here's a shot in the Peaceful Time short of Asuka and Rey on a bay and there's some crashed boats in the background. And here's the same shot without Asuka though in the Until You Come To Me music video. 
Here's a shot of the trio walking across the wasteland with some windmill in the foreground. And here's basically the same shot, but this time without the trio entirely. Here's a shot of Shinji walking in the snow, shivering in the Peaceful Times music video. And then here's basically the equivalent shot in Until You Come To Me, though this time instead of just being in his plug suit, he has a little blanket over him. And we have seen that this sequence is, has basically carried over to the final film itself. So here's a shot from Teaser Trailer 2, and here's a shot from Teaser Trailer 3 for Shin Evangelion. And actually the shot of the train station at the bottom was in the Peaceful Times short as well. So if they carry over everything from it, what's going to happen in that shot is that Shinji's going to collapse in depression, Rei and Asuka are going to turn around, and then Asuka's going to like step on Shinji in kind of a mocking way. So yeah, that could be one of the feelings they're going with for the choice of 3.0 plus 1.0 for the English title. All right, so finally, let's move into the Japanese title. So at the top of it, I have it in its in its pure Japanese. Then we have it in its romanization into English for pronunciation. And then at the bottom, we have the English translation. We see that even the English translation of the movie, I'm still using Shin for the translation because as it stands, the Shin at the beginning of the Japanese title is kind of untranslatable. It could have multiple meanings. So one of the meanings it could have is Shin as in new, which is when it's written with this kanji. Or it could be Shin as in true when it's written with this kanji. Or it could be Shin as in God when it's written with this kanji. And this is not the first time they've added this ambiguity in this exact same way, basically. So in the 2016 film, Shin Godzilla, um, the original international title was going to be Godzilla Resurgence, but they ended up going with Shin Godzilla. And really the only reason I can think to do this is to just carry over that ambiguity from the Japanese title, which is Shin Gojira, which is Shin Godzilla. So yeah, this is not the first time. Additionally, the next project that Ano is helming is Shin Ultraman. So this is the third time he's used this exact same structure where it's Shin Evangelion, Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, and all of them are in with the Katakana Shin to add this kind of ambiguity to what it all means. And this is just kind of a fun fact real quick. But when I was researching Kari Kano, which is the TV series he directed after Evangelion, um, I checked the final episode to see if it followed the pattern of being named after a sci-fi story, which it didn't. However, I noticed that for episode 18, it actually was the first instance of him ever using this naming pattern of Shin and then Dot. So Shin something. And in this case, it's actually even more interesting because... The pronunciation of the Japanese title for this episode 18 of Kari Kano, His and Her Circumstances, is actually Shinka. So the entire title is in Katakana, Shinka, but when you look at it, this the ambiguity of how he spaced it out makes it look like the Ka is actually the Japanese character for Chikara, which means power. So it almost looks like it says Shin Chikara, or Shin Power. So this whole fascination that he has with using Shin in interesting ways to twist the meanings of the titles goes back even that far. It's kind of crazy. All right, so getting back to the Japanese title. So we've gone over the Shin part. What does Shin mean? What's the nuance of Shin? But before we get into that center section about Evangelion, um, there's one more thing to mention about Shin. So up until this point, all of the Evangelion films have been called Evangelion Shin Gekijoan, or New Theatrical Edition. So right here we have the title for the first film, um, which is 1.0. In English, but the Japanese title is Evangelion Shingeki Joban Jo, and the translation is New Theatrical Edition Prelude. So the Shin from Shingeki Joban has basically been moved to the front as well. So up until now, all the films have been Evangelion Shingeki Joban, but this final film is Shin Evangelion Geki Joban. So that's just an, another interesting aspect. All right, so finally, moving on to the middle section of Evangelion in Japanese. This part is actually really hard to explain, kind of, but basically, the way that Evangelion is written in the first three films and the way it's written in this last film is different, the spelling that they've used. You would spell it like this. So basically, they used a very anachronistic spelling for the two vowel sounds of e and o in the title. So even though you wouldn't pronounce it we and wo, you would spell it like this if you wanted to be more specific as to um, the different characters that they're using. When you translate it, though, it still translates as Evangelion into English. This isn't the first time that he's done this as well. So, again, in Gunbuster, there was a ship in it that was called the Excelion. 
And if you look at the Japanese characters, it's the same exact two anachronistic characters for the spellings of e and o. But this kind of all begs the question of why change it though? Why up until now use this stylized kind of cool way of spelling Evangelion and all of a sudden for the final film you change it back to what it originally was in the TV series and the original theatrical films. So you can kind of argue that maybe there's a reason to that or maybe it really is just a stylistic thing but it's definitely strange to change it mid-production in a movie series. All right so finally we're gonna get to the really juicy part which is what the heck is up with this. What the heck does this mean? Like, why is this the title of the final installment? So, what these two lines are is the end double bar line in music. So, it basically represents where the music ends. So, up until this point, the three Evangelion films in Japan have been called Evangelion Jo, Ha, and Q. And this comes from the classical Jo, Ha, Q structure in Japan. So, this structure can be used for stuff like poetry and theater and just even narratives in general. So up until this point, it seemed like most fans just assumed it was being used in the narrative sense. Just like how in the West, we tend to use that little mountain diagram to show the five points of a story where you have introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, resolution. In Japan, they can use this Johaku structure instead to tell a story. So that's what we all thought it was. But now that we know that the final film is actually using this musical symbol, that this Johaku was probably not representing theatrical structure at all, but was referencing music structure. So we have Joe Q and then the end sign for music. So it is kind of like a nice way to wrap the titles together. All right, and just another quick thing for people who don't know about this. This is the correct way how to write Joe Q in Japanese. But for the films, they ended up changing Q to the English letter Q. And the reason they did this is probably for the same reason why they're using the ambiguous Shin in Katakana. Because with the English Q, it can still stand for Q. It can still stand for the Q of Joha Q, but it can also stand for the Q at the beginning of quickening. And quickening is actually a pretty accurate translation of Q in Joha Q. It can also just mean rush. But the most interesting thing is that this Q also gives it the ambiguity of maybe meaning Q as in old. So you can think of the films as split up into kind of two duologies. You have Joha and then you have Q Shin. And even just looking at them stylized this way, you can kind of see that. Like the first two, very traditional, hard kanji, and the last two are kind of these stylized, ambiguous blobs. Kind of hate dealing with them. But with this ambiguity, you can also look at them as meaning Joha Q Shin. So Joha for the first two films, and then the last two films are Q and Shin, as in old and new. So they kind of have this pair of being tied together. And this kind of wraps back around to What's the deal with this final film, including 3.0 in its title? So maybe the final two films really are tied more closely than the two that came before them. All right, so we went through what these two lines mean. They're the end double bar line for a music section. But the question is, is the final installment named after just these two lines? Or is it actually this symbol? If it's including the colon, which has been in all of the film titles up until this point, it changes it to an in repeat sign. So basically, in a section of music, once you hit the symbol, you go back to either the beginning or to a mark section, and then you play it again, and then once you get to the symbol, then you finish. But that's kind of a big deal. Like, that's kind of a big deal whether or not it's an in double bar line or if it's an in repeat sign. And I can pretty confidently say it's definitely an in repeat sign. And this next part that we're going to get into is something that I've never seen discussed in either English fandom or Japanese fandom, and I don't know why, because it always stuck out to me, but it's just not discussed. But let's get into it. I think it's the biggest find of this video, I guess. So up until now, the installments of the first three films in Japanese have been thought of as Jo, Ha, and Q. But in actuality, they're not. The three movies are actually colon Jo, colon Ha, and colon Q. These are what the three installments are actually called. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to add a pronunciation to the colon and I'm going to add a pronunciation based on what I think the meaning is. I'm going to call them repeat. So these are repeat symbols to me. So this is repeat ha, repeat jo, repeat q. All right, so where's the evidence for this? Like, where's the evidence that these are the actual true titles of the three films up until now? So basically, like, for over a year since they've geared up for promotion for the final Evangelion film, without, like, without fail, in all promotional materials, they will always refer to the three films like this, as repeat jo, repeat ha, repeat q. They always write them with the colon. 
It's something they definitely are consciously doing. Here's a tweet from the official Ava Twitter where they're promoting the movies, where they use colon 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 for each of the installments. Here's from Cars Twitter when they're promoting the 4D showings, and again, they always make sure to include the colons. Repeat Joe, repeat Ha, repeat Q. And here, even as far back as April on Cars' own website, they always make sure to write the colons. Repeat Joe, repeat Ha, repeat Q. And here's on the official Evangelion website. Even here, where they use the numbers instead of the kanji, they still make sure to always put the colon. So yeah, this pretty much confirms, in my mind, that the colons are part of the installment title. Not like what we previously thought, where the colon is separating the series title from the installment title. No, the colon is part of the installment title. Alright, so just a quick recap. So what we thought was Joha Q, what we thought was 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, weren't. They were actually repeat Joe, repeat Ha, repeat Q, repeat 1.0, repeat 2.0, repeat 3.0. So, if we were to actually play this, like a piece of music, I think what this title may represent, or what they may be setting up, is that there was a 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. But this was a story that we didn't see. So basically, 1.0 happened, 2.0 happened, 3.0 happened, and then we come to the repeat symbol, and we go back. So this is how we get to the first movie, which is repeat 1.0, repeat 2.0, and then we have repeat 3.0. And now the question is, is what's going to happen now? If this is the second time around, then that means we get to finish the story and either end the music or continue playing. All right, so now let's take that new information and look at the English title and the English subtitle through a new lens and see if that can kind of change the reading we get out of them at all. So first we have Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. So now we know that the colon is actually part of the installment title. So it's colon 3.0 plus 1.0, repeat 3.0 plus 1.0. What causes the problem is that the colon is not a traditional arithmetic symbol, so we don't know the order of operations on it. We don't know how to split up the repeat with the rest of the title. So there's kind of three ways I feel we could look at it. It's either the colon modifies everything that comes after it, so it's colon 3.0 plus 1.0, which in this case, it would kind of just go back to the stylization argument where it's just 3.0 plus 1.0, just means 4.0, there's not really any other nuance to it. So I feel like this one's kind of a basic reading to it, and I don't think it would be true. The next way to interpret it is that the repeat is just modifying the 3.0, and that the plus symbol is acting as an and. So it's repeat 3.0 and 1.0. And in this instance, the only way I can look at it that makes sense is that, so we will be continuing the story of 3.0, but we will also be getting to see or experience the original 1.0, the very beginning of the story that up until now has been unseen. And this could either be through like some sort of space time shenanigans or just exposition. Like somebody finally breaks it all down and they're like, okay, this is what happened. This is how we've gotten to this repeat chain of events. The last way you can look at it is that it's repeat 3.0 and plus 1.0. And I kind of feel like this way makes the least sense. Like it takes the most mental gymnastics to get your head around, but the nuance of this makes the most sense to me. That what we're watching is repeat 3.0 and a new beginning of something else. So I feel like by the end of the film, we will have broken from the chain of repetition in some way. And I feel like that makes more sense that it would be plus 1.0. All right, and lastly, to finish off the video, let's look at Thrice Upon a Time one more time and draw any new conclusions. So up until now, Thrice Upon a Time if it does represent what is the contents of the movies, I feel like with the new information that we've been watching repeated events makes it make more sense, especially if it's the case that the story has been repeated two times up until this point. Because thrice upon a time, of course, based off the phrase once upon a time, it's something you say at the beginning of a story. So, so far, if the repeat theory is true, we've been a part of the second part of a series. You have 1 through 3, then you have repeat 1 through 3, and now, with this final movie, maybe we'll start from a new beginning. So I think that that's what's going on, is that we're finishing off a repetition, which is technically the second run-through, and by the end of the story, we will be starting anew again, for a third time. And that interpretation works whether or not you're thinking about it as going back and trying again, 
or just trying again in a new way from this point on. It works with either interpretation. So my proposition is that thrice upon a time is probably in reference to this. So we have 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Then we have repeat 1.0, repeat 2.0, repeat 3.0. And then with this new film, we will finally get into a new beginning, which is plus 1.0. So yeah, so that's basically all I really have to talk about the titles and to break them down. If you found anything that you think is wrong or if you found anything you thought was cool, go ahead, discuss it in the comments, all that stuff. By the way, this is like my first YouTube video. So if you want to leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down, try to make it equal. Like if, there, if there's like five thumbs ups and like four thumbs downs, then please give me a thumb down to make it equal. I think that's really funny. So yeah, please do that.